Now let's talk about the Azure Load Balancer. Now the Azure Bal <coughs> Now let's talk about the Azure load balancer. Now the load balancer is a very simple concept to understand. So you have a load balancer whose job is to evenly distribute traffic across multiple resources or servers in the backend. So a situation does not arise where you have a lot of servers in the backend and only a few of them are receiving traffic, whereas the others are not receiving traffic at all. Now to compensate for a situation like that, you have something called as the Azure load balancer. So let's look at how the architecture of the Azure load balancer looks like. Now here you have the architecture of a load balancer. So you can see that there is a load balancer in the middle and this particular load balancer accepts connection from the client and the load balancer then forwards that request to the backend. Now the backend pool can consist of either virtual machines or a virtual machine scale set. So in this particular diagram, you can see only virtual machines, but it can be a virtual machine scale set as well. And here the important thing to remember is the load balancing rule. Now the load balancing rule connects the IP address and the port of the front end and connects it to the back end port. So here what would happen is the port 80 of the front end IP address is connected to port 3000 of the virtual machine in the back end. So, so the port 3000 for the virtual machine should be open and should be ready to accept inbound connection. So now let's create our load balancer and let's see how this works in practice. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll create a few virtual machines and this virtual machine would run on port 3000 as mentioned here. This particular script I will send in the description below. So this is just a very simple web server that will just accept inbound connection. So let's create a few virtual machines. So I'll click on create. So I'll create it in my VNet resource group. I'll just call this as VM. And it'll be in East US. And let me just give a And let's open port 80 as well. Now let's go to the networking tab. And in this networking tab, I will just disable the public IP because I do not want any public IP for these virtual machines. I want just private IP addresses and my load balancer will connect to these virtual machines using the private IP. And everything else remains the same. You can actually even create a load balancer from here itself, but we'll not do that. We'll create a load balancer separately. So. Let's just leave everything as it is. And in the advanced tab, in the custom data, I'll just paste that particular script. So I'll just copy this. And I'll paste it here. And let's click on review and create. And let's create our application. Okay, our deployment is done. So let's go to the resource. So we've created a virtual machine. Now make sure that you note which particular network your virtual machine is in. So you can see that it's in the VNet virtual network. So let's create another virtual machine within the same network. So let's go back to our virtual machine. We'll create another one. We'll use the same resource group. I'll just call this as VM1. Copy this. And let's create a virtual machine. Okay, so we've created two virtual machines without any public IP address. Now, one thing I've forgotten to mention is that we need to open port 3000 because our application would be reading request from port 3000. So let's do that. Let's go to a virtual machine. Let's go to a networking tab. And here we need to add an inbound port rule. So let's open this. And here, let me just mention this as port 3000. And it's going to be a TCP and allow. Okay, so let's click on add. And similarly, I'll do the same for the other virtual network as well. So let's go back to VM1. Go to the networking tab. And let's add an inbound port rule. And again, this will be 3000. Click on add. Okay, so now that we've done this, let's go and create our load balancer. So I'll go to my load balancer here. 
And here you get the option of choosing between application gateway and load balancer. This application gateway is something that I'll teach you in the next chapter. So this is the layer 7 OSI model load balancer. What we'll be using for this one is the load balancer. So let's open this. Let's click on create. You need to specify your resource group. And you can just give a name for this. I'll just call this as load balancer. Let's go down. So here you can mention what kind of what type of load balancer you want. So if you want a public facing load balancer, then you need to select public. Whereas if you want a private load balancer that has no connectivity to the internet, then you need to select the internal load balancer. For our example, we'll select the public one. And here the SKU that you need to select is standard. Now the basic is only if you want to do some kind of prototyping or if you want to create a POC for production level load balancer, you need to select the standard. And if you want your load balancer to have a regional or a global construct, then you can choose one of these. Now the global load balancer is something that I'll teach you in the upcoming chapter. So for the time being, let's select the regional one. Let's click on front end IP config. So here you need to select the IP for your particular load balancer. So let's create a IP address. And here, Let's create a new one. So I just call this as load balancer IP. I click on OK. Click on add. Okay, so we've created a front end IP address. And let's go and create a backend pool. So our backend pool will consist of the virtual machines that we've just created. So here I just need to give a name for my backend pool. I'll just call this as backend pool. And here I need to select the virtual network. So our virtual machines are in the VNet virtual network. So let's select that. And here you have the option of either selecting your virtual machine or your virtual machine scale set as I, as I said previously. So let's select the virtual machine. So I'll click on add. And here for some reason it's showing me virtual machine 2. Now virtual machine 2 does not exist. So what we need to select is virtual machine and virtual machine 1. So if I go back to my virtual machine, you can see that I have just two virtual machines in my account. So I need to select virtual machine and virtual machine 1. So I'll click on add again. Add. Okay, let's go to our inbound rules. So here I need to create my load balancing rule. So I'll click on my load balancing rule here. I need to give a name for my load balancing rule. And here I need to give my front end IP address. So this is the IP address I just created. And here my port would be 80. So I would be accepting requests from port 80 of my front end IP address. And here is the back end port. So uh, my application is currently expecting requests from port 3000. So I need to give a back end port as 3000. And the pool is basically the pool that I created in my previous tab. And here you need to create a health probe. So the health probe will check the health of your application. So you can just select your HTTP. And here what you need to do is you need to again select port 3000 because your application is running on port 3000. And click on OK. I have to give a name for my health probe. So I'll just call this as probe. Click on add. And the outbound rule is something that I'll teach you in the upcoming chapters. Let's click on tags, review and create. And let's create a load balancer. So the validation has passed. Let's create a load balancer. OK, so our load balancer has been created. Let's go to the resource. And here you can see that it's connected my port 80 of the front end IP address to the port 3000 of the backend pool. So let's get our public IP address and let's see if this works. And you can see that it's connecting to one of the virtual machines. So let's, and you can see now that it's connected to the other virtual machine because the name here was VM1. So let's copy this and let's run a curl command. So let me just clear this. So if I run a curl command on this IP address, you can see that it gives host VM. Let's run it again. And now it's hit the other virtual machine. So it's giving it as VM1. So if I keep doing it, you'll see that it keeps giving different responses. And that's because that it's 
hitting different virtual machines in the backend pool. So, so it's basically load balancing between both the virtual machines in the backend pool. So I hope this was a useful lecture. This was a very simple lecture on how you can create a load balancer. So I'll see you in the next chapter.